Okay, it's church up in here. Good evening, Nzanzi, and welcome to your midweek dose of training essay right here on SABC3. We are halfway through the week, and we continue to serve you trends and topics the best way we know how, which is hot and spicy. I go by the name of Mable, <laughs> the emperor of Umlazi, the connoisseur of all things soft. Ow. I ah. never roll alone. I have my primetime queens with me. Right over there, Elma, the first in line, should anything happen to me. I can see a lot of your chest today. <laughs> it's fine. Mm. Right, and then mm. we've got our second princess right there, Rifilwe. <laughs> okay, and to, <laughs> and to help us unpack the trends tonight <laughs> is the Naomi Campbell of male <laughs> supermodels in South Africa. I'm talking about TV personality and businessman, yes. Mr. Buns Out himself. Yes. Oh, guys, this Somizi thing is not going away, ne? <laughs> Today is the number in. Yesterday we were talking about his IG live during which he said he wasn't apologizing. This is all for the backlash that he received because he shared a City Press journalist's number on social media because she dared ask about rumors. Uh, today, hashtag Penny started trending after, well, you know, she, she went into bat for Soms. Um, this is what she said. It's long, but basically she says, Sanif, it's time you held your journalists and editors accountable. So she's team so easy and she's also throwing shade in Sanif's direction. Everyone is now talking ethics. Um, she came under fire for her views on this. Lots of people criticizing her. And that is why we asked her to come join us on the show. Welcome to Training SA Radio and TV personality, Penny Lebiane. Hello, and uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's not really a case of quite uh, Team So Easy or, uh, or Shade at, uh, you know, uh, Senef. It's a case of like, let's get the facts right if we're going to put out information to the public. Mm. And that both parties are actually responsible for taking their public into their confidence with information that makes sense. Uh, because both, uh, you know, Sumizi has a responsibility. And hence, I say, I acknowledge the fact that he's only apologizing for putting out the number. I, I can't say that, you know, he shouldn't swear at someone. But the bottom line is that, uh, you know, he works on radio, he works on television. He is actually governed by the same ethics. You can't put out someone's number just like that. Sure. Then he has to deal with the consequences Penny, of that. Yeah. But as for Sinef, uh, you know, there's a process that they follow when they write stories. This thing of calling people Friday afternoon or Saturday morning and saying I have a deadline mm. and boom, uh, you know, there's a story <laughs> on Sunday morning. That's just ridiculous, uh, mm. you know. So do you, okay, so I, I hear exactly what you're saying, but this story, of course, has given rise to plenty of conversations, which one of those is central to that is the media ethics conversation. Within those ethics that you're talking about, the fact that he was, in fact, given right to reply, and they did reach out to him to get his input, um, and he responded the way you do. How then do we start to strike that balance, right, of that public interest? Because this is a person who did get married on television, amongst other things, right? So we definitely are interested. How do you strike the balance between public interest and, of course, the job that journalists need to do? I hear what you're saying about my deadline is in an hour, respond now. But beyond things like that, what else are you complaining about ethically? Okay, so what I'm saying is that in a case like this, especially the one particularly about the divorce, uh, you know, once you start saying the divorce, there is processes uh, that follow before someone is actually divorced. The fact of journalists or media houses hiding behind, you know, Maps, who's Penny's friend, uh, is a source. At least if you mention that it's Maps, then we can collaborate the fact that you're saying. But if you're just saying a random person and it's only one person, I mean, this thing has been unfolding in public. If they gave us at least a timeline of what happened at the birthday, what happened this, what happened, then we can say they've been following a story. It's like at a wink, we're writing a story because Penny, who doesn't like maps, called the Sunday world to say this about this. And I heard from Rufili, come mm -hmm. on, guys, we're not children anymore. Uh, you know, and on top of that, the very same personalities as well, uh, you know, they, they are aware that they're feeding the public and they're feeding the media the information that they are. Uh, there's also processes that also have to, to, to follow to deal with. Uh, you know, with media houses. Maybe people need to get, yeah. uh, you know, <clears throat> media 101 classes. Okay. How do you deal with the process of how a story goes in the newsroom? People get shocked that they call on Saturday, All but right. the editorial okay. team took on Tuesday and decide a story. You All know right. what I mean? Okay. It just doesn't work in a Tonight. Penny, thank you so much. In the interest of time, we are going to have to end it there. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us your time. You're welcome.
All right, guys. So, Mebs, um, we we gave our opinions on the story. Yeah. What do you think? Look, I mean, first, I think if anyone else wants to know what uh, Penny also wanted to, to say, it's, it's all in her tweets. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, I, I see what he's saying, and it is really tit for tat. And I, I see the argument. It's the fact that if what you're running after is just to expose anything in someone's personal life, mm. um, then, you know, if, if I'm just going to react like this, what, what do you expect is going gonna, is gonna to come? But I think then the other argument is if you're going to continue to show us every aspect of this and this comes up, well, you've started to make it in the interest of, of the public eye. Mm. But you've, you've I opened guess up the door. It's like battling, you've opened up the door. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a tricky one. But it isn't, it isn't fair to just come on like that with any little string that you get to say that this person I think it's safe divorced. to say you can always just mind your P's and Q's. I.e. manners. Mm. That's it. This next story waltzed onto my timeline after our president, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, announced Vice President Didi as the chair of the Interministerial Committee, which is meant to ensure that the country has a successful COVID-19 vaccine rollout. This announcement was met with such criticism from opposition parties. Duh. Okay, (laughs) so... Twitter being Twitter, uh, they had a field day with it, and this is what Ukulani had to say. David Mabuza, when he heard that he would be leading the vaccine work. <laughs> <laughs> and then Muslim Maimani was critical of the appointment with this. He said, recent history of deputy president's task has shown poor results, if any. Then Deputy President Ramaphosa was tasked with Interministerial Committee on ESCOM and SOE turnarounds. We can see those results. Now, Deputy President Mabuza has the same and vaccine rollout. We need public-private partnership teamwork here. And yeah, uh, guys, Omalu Siditwaba had this to say and said, and now they have to disturb his peaceful self-isolation. No politician adhered so diligently to COVID-19 protocols than our deputy president. All right, so (laughs) uh, this has all raised a hang of a lot of eyebrows. I'm keen to find out from you guys, if you were to put forward your own candidate, your preferred candidate to roll out the vaccine campaign, Uh, who -hmm. would you choose, uh, wrong answers only? Okay, we had no business winning the 2019 Rugby World Cup. If you weren't taking notes, we sucked. Yeah. Mm. And then suddenly we won the World Cup and the person credited with this is Rasi Erasmus. If he could get us to win a Rugby World Cup, I'm sure he can get vaccines everywhere they need to <laughs> Except you don't have to pass vaccines backwards and you have to so having, hustle with them. So having said all that, beer companies are chomping at the bit, just trying to get busy somewhere somehow. They are in the business of cold chains, refrigeration, transportation, logistics. Let them do the job. Okay? And, and if they give people courts, they will come get their vaccines. Okay, <laughs> support. Yeah, maps. I think I'd probably go with... Uh, Phil Impella. Definitely Phil Impella because if you go onto Twitter, yes. he has everyone's information on everything. You know you've gotten a job on Twitter before you've been told by your friends you got the job. So we'll find out about the vaccine rollout through him before it actually even happens. I, I wanted to go with Didi, but yeah. clearly you guys don't. Mom's so there. I would go with Umam Zandile Kumete. You need somebody who is Corruption going to... Corruption accused. No, no, no. Somebody who's going to tell you you are taking this vaccine now <laughs> and you are not going to go. Because South Africans are here yeah. They're going to go, I don't want the vaccine. Do, would you say no to her? By the way, guys, when Uma Play does this, ne? this is a hand signal for... <laughs> Okay, no, this is over That's now. I, I'm going to put my Blair in the naughty corner for all of his misbehavior in the last few minutes. Um, but he'll be back when we return. Um, so don't go anywhere. Maps will also still be here. So even if you don't like our voices, I would just... He said it. he's going to take off his shirt. He's uh, not going to take off his shirt, my Blair. <laughs> tuned into trending essay so earlier today i was getting my daily dose of news you know i always hunt for those for you not for me and i bumped into this headline that read man wins 60 million rand purple after being dumped by living girlfriend so the story here is that the 30 year old millionaire who's soon to become my best friend had just broken (laughs) up with his girlfriend he was quoted saying i was not in the best of moods by the time i checked the results on friday night i was by myself and she had already moved out 
Mm-hmm. Mm. So we actually did ask everyone at home uh, what you would do to get your lover back mm. after he won 60 million rand. This is what you had to say. Just saying the number drives me crazy. So Issa Sivain says, I would go back to him to ask for forgiveness. I care there's no perfect relationship. I'll be like, babe, I was stupid, dumb, childish. You know I love you. There's no perfect relationship. Look, no <laughs> crime in starting afresh. And now fake tears in my eyes. The stuff we do for money. Mm. Mm -hmm. Julia says nothing. Just going to chill and wait for his part to be played. <laughs> oh, that is cold. And then Salome says, I would go to Inyanga to get something I can use to get him mm. back. 60 million is a lot of money to spend alone. There are plenty of reasons there. Okay, guys, yeah. I want to ask you around the table. Yeah. Let's say your ex is the one that won that and you just left what would you do to get that okay first of all let's establish the fact that salome is a woman after my own heart very <laughs> very wise okay so i would definitely corobella i have no scum secondly i go to the temple i have a word with the temple auntie Woo! so we put it for him. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to go any other direction because you're not getting back <laughs> any other way. So you'd either do that, aka put rocks in someone's cupboard. Woo! But I mean, like, there's no other way you're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna be able to do anything else. Elma, what would you do? No, I'm still on the rock story. I can't believe he just dropped that. No, no, no. I mean, as, okay, guys, there's absolutely no way you are dumping me after you have gotten sixty million. I would claim. Uh, what is what's that illness? Alimony. Alzheimer. No, I'll what? go. I'll, I'll go with all the. I forgot. I, amnesia, mm -hmm. Alzheimer, just, uh, Parkinson, all of it. And uh, but there's no way you're breaking up with me. I'm back. In fact, I'd walk past you in the lounge and go to the bedroom as I unpack my clothes and go, baby, what are you eating? Just lead with I'm pregnant. I can't. Uh, uh, ana ana anatomically, I am not capable. But we'll see how medi medicine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen. The next story is about a man who could claim anything. Oh He's leaving gosh. a certain white house, white house. So you can also claim an atomic. <laughs> you could carry it. <laughs> so keep it moving. It is officially inauguration day in America. President elect Joe Biden and the first woman vice president of that capital country, Kamala Harris. <laughs> yes, queen. Yes, queen. They will be sworn into office, much to everyone's relief. This, of course, spells the end to Trump cheese era, and he is shipped mm. out the White House today. Okay, so in the beautiful, mm. glorious, oh, heavenly hours before his big exit, Trump continued being Trump, and he basically, he was pardoning convicted public figures and celebrities who have been charged for various crimes. The final lucky two to get a free card are rappers Lil Wayne, yes. you heard me, mm. and Kodak Black, mm. who both face charges related to the possession of firearms. So basically, the end of Trump's reign as president means that he might need a new gig. So we thought it's fitting to take a look at some of the most jaw-dropping moments in his um, time in office to get some inspiration and see how maybe we can help him find his next mm. job or something, you know, to do with his free time. Okay, I would like to suggest we take a look at this clip. <laughs> We're going to build a wall. It's going to be built. It's not even, believe it or not, it's not even a difficult thing to do. So build a wall around yourself all the way. <laughs> we can't see you anymore. And of course, because Homeboy has got such a penchant for making up new names for viruses and coming up with new medical te uh, terminology, uh, like in this video. Let's just check it out real quick. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? There are reports of dozens of incidents of bi bias against Chinese Americans in this country. Your own aide, Secretary Azar, says he does not use this term. He says ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? Because it comes say from it's China. Racist. It's not racist at all. No, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. So Trump can just, you know, put on a white coat and diagnose and cure you know, that small little thing that they're dealing with in America I mean, this, and globally. This, and it's called white supremacy. You know what I mean? This <laughs> is the same guy who just wants to put, uh, what do you call it, hand sanitizer in your system so that it takes away the To clear out the virus, mm. exactly. Okay. So 
I don't know about him starting a new job. So, you know what, quickly after his dismissal, um, his dismal performance as president, I think first he needs to get a crash course on how voting works. Yes. Get all the books available because you don't just start tweeting stop the counting when the numbers are mm. not mm. going your way. Mm -hmm. Hashtag mm. stop the count. Standing and hands. speaking of studying, I mean, Motono Ochele, like he is burnt, he is leathery because you spend so much time on the damn golf course. Uh -huh. And one of the best ways to protect yourself is hats. So I think I would probably donate him a hat um, <laughs> because those manga hats are absolutely Whoa. terrible. Yes. So uh, I've got plenty. Um, come through and uh, we can make your hair great again <laughs> yes yes make that buddy's hair great again, <laughs> great if, again. You make if you can make that skin great again actually before you go guys i'm um, actually i want to commend trump yep. he actually lived up to what he wanted to do he got the republicans out of office he they lost the senate they lost congress he did make america great again and on that note, Maps, that dubious note, thank you, <laughs> thank you for coming much. and spending some time with us. It was so cool. You guys, it was fun. So cool. Yeah. Get to do this every day. We're going to do this again <laughs> next time. It was a blast. Listen, when we come back from our break, we do have advocate Tembega and Ngaitobi talking about the GEMS report, looking into racial, possible racial profiling of doctors by medical aid schemes. You don't want to miss it. Sa on three. Stay with us. still tuned into Trading SA on SABC3. This next story has been on our timelines for a while. This uh, comes after advocate Tembega Ngaitobi and his colleagues released uh, the much anticipated interim, uh, interim report on uh, their investigation into alleged racial profiling of black and Indian doctors by medical aid schemes. Mm. Now, the interim report was released by advocate Ngaitobi Kai Tobi after the Pretoria High Court dismissed the application by a GEMS medical scheme to block this release. The findings stated that GEMS Discovery and Med Scheme have been unfairly classifying black health professionals. All right, and joining us online is advocate Tembega Ngurei Tobi to help us unpack this interim report. Welcome to Training SA, sir. Thank you very much and thank you for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here. All right. Advocate, let's start from the beginning. We understand that the investigation panel was established in 2019. What propelled this investigation? All right, two complaints, black doctors, and by black, I mean African, Indian, and colored, hmm. complained that when the medical schemes decide who to pay, how to settle claims, and where claims have been improperly paid, mm -hmm. how to recover that money, when that decision is made under Section 59 of the Medical Schemes Act, there is racial discrimination. There are discriminatory impacts experienced by black doctors compared to white doctors. Mm. Two reasons, second reason, the way in which the processes are implemented are unfair. There's no hearing. The scheme acts as complainant, prosecutor, judge, executioner, sheriff. Mm. So just for us to be able to understand the sort of purview or the extent of your powers as a panel, you made it very clear that the mandate of the panel was to function as an inquisitorial body and not as an adjudicative body. What is the difference and what does it mean for your recommendations and the findings that come from your report? An adjudicatory body is like a court. Someone makes a complaint, a finding is made, it is binding, it must be complied with. Okay. If it is not complied with, you are guilty of contempt of court. Mm. That term, contempt of court, has become very familiar uh, lately. But an inquisitorial body investigates the facts and finds, makes findings and then makes recommendations to another body, which is then entitled to take decisions. So, an example, Judge Zondo is not adjudicative. Mm. Mm. He is inquisitorial. He makes findings recommendations, but he gives it to the president to implement. Sure. 
Right. Okay, so advocate, we have a, a, like almost no time left. The report states that uh, it didn't find evidence of explicit racial bias in algorithms and methods. Um, however, there's a substantial difference in a fraud wastage and abuse outcomes between black and non-black practitioners. So how many of these practitioners found guilty of fraud were actually innocent? Is there any way of knowing? No, there isn't. Why? Because the entire process is speculative. A suspicion is often treated as fact. Uh -huh. Why? Because the way in which the investigation is conducted. So if you committed a crime, someone came to the studio now at Trending SA and said you had stolen a chocolate at spa. The first thing you would say is prove it. Uh -huh. And they would prove it before an independent judge. But in this context, the scheme says you've stolen from me. It doesn't go to an independent person. It decides for itself what you have stolen, how it is to be recovered. And for that reason, we are never able to know if you are suspected, are you in fact guilty? Mm. Mm. So advocate, um, uh, I'm not uh, very versed into this law thing. So please explain to me in simple English, in layman's terms, what were your findings and, and what are your recommendations? Well, one of the two questions we were required to, um, to answer. Is there racial discrimination experienced by black doctors in relation to the three primary schemes, discovery, gems, and med scheme? The answer is yes. There is overwhelming, irrefutable, sustained evidence over a significant period of time that there is racial discrimination in outcomes. If I can give you a summary, at gems, a black doctor is 80% more likely to be flagged for fraud, waste, and abuse. At discovery, that is five percent more likely, but they get no lollipops for that. And at med scheme, three hundred and thirty percent more likely if you are a black doctor to be flagged as having committed fraud, waste, and abuse when compared to white doctors. So on racial discrimination, the evidence is overwhelming. Okay, thank you so much, advocate, for your time. It was great to have you on the show, um, and we'll keep an eye on the story. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was really interesting. Join us again tomorrow. Miss Essa Entando, former Miss Essa Entando and Corsi Kunene talks to us about her book about the Rona. And then on Friday, Super Mega joins us for Ta Mega Mania. So don't miss out. Cheers.